and welcome. I'm Kiri Bloor and this is Brands Hatch and we're here today for the Lotus Festival. Our season seems to be moving rather rapidly and it's all changed on the championship leaderboard after Spa. But today the Lotus Cup UK and the Lotus On Track Elise Trophy are in good company as there's a whole host of Lotus cars that have shaped motorsport through the decades. Now there's one man that certainly knows everything there is to know about Lotus, it's Rupert Manwari who is Head of Motorsport at Lotus, welcome. Yeah, yeah, good morning, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now can you tell us a little bit about the festival, obviously there's so many cars through the decades here. Yes, oh, it's a fantastic combination of Lotus Cup UK and general enthusiasts, road cars and race cars, it's, it's all of those things together and only 10 miles from London, it's brilliant. It certainly is fantastic. Now, obviously, a little bit further down the festival, there's a, an awful lot of F1 cars out there. So, uh, ranging throughout the decades, which one's your favourite? Um, I quite like, There's, a, I think there's an 87 Camel Team Lotus, which I quite like, which is the Honda Twin Turbo with Senna driving. That's my favourite. Now, of course, we couldn't let the day go by without giving you a glimpse of the festival. Now, there are so many cars here. There's anything from the Formula One cars of Nelson Piquet and Ayrton Senna to, of course, uh, the largest sports cars driven once by Graham Hill. This is certainly Lotus through the decades. Now, there's one man that's uh, helped organise a lot of this, Bibbs. Welcome. Hi, thanks very much. Now, can you tell us a little bit about what's going on here? Obviously, there's lots of cars on display. Can you tell us, talk us through what's going on? Well, there's a few elements to the festival. We start off with the car clubs. We're up the far end. We've got, I think, 10 clubs turned up this year with maybe 500 cars between them. We've got the Trade Festival, which has been 50% bigger this year, so it's a nice increase. We've got the Lotus Cars presence, which is where we are now. They bought their current range of cars. We've got the Formula One cars from Classic Team Lotus. They bought a lovely selection of every one of their colour schemes. We've got the Lotus Motorsport with the T125, their race cars, their cup cars. And um, a nice big crowd, which is good despite the weather. Now, Adam, this season has certainly been successful for you and you're sitting 100 points clear or more on the championship leaderboard on the Lotus on Track Elise Trophy. Are you feeling confident ahead of this weekend? Yeah, fairly confident, so we've just got to keep it on the track and uh, not let the weather get in the way. I know the rain's just started coming down, so obviously you qualified and you're qualifying and I can see the smile on your face, you've qualified in P1. Will it change the way you drive with a little bit of rain now? Yeah, it's got to a little bit, you know, you've got to be a little bit more cautious and not throw it up anywhere and get yourself into any tangles. So yeah, just drive sensibly really and bring it home in top three. Fantastic. Well, we're assuming we'll see you on the podium very shortly. Thank you. Now, Brands Hatch is often referred to as one of the greatest circuits around the world. Of course, Nigel Mansell took home his first win here and our very own Martin Donnelly has had some great success on the GP circuit. It's a place where legends were made and a place where legends are remembered. Of course, behind me, the Graham Hill corner, John Surtees also remembered here and Lotus's very own Jim Clark as well. With hills, cambers and dips, this circuit can certainly make for some very tricky racing. And it's the circuit beloved by the drivers, as evidenced by a huge 32-car grid headed by Adam Gore. He shares the front row with Craig Denman. Then row two, it's Ryan Savage and Martin Donnelly. Seth Walpole heads row six, just clear of Richard Hill Evans. Dave Carr should go strongly from 14th. And Stefan Donnelly right in the midfield in 17th. Still they keep coming, Clive Willis, we would expect to climb from 21st and arguably the same for Chris Perkins from 26th. Chris Mayhew and Jackie Perkins complete the field as we're ready for the off and away we go. It's a good start from Gore and Devon, slow away though from David Alexander and he makes contact with some of those behind. So as the leaders surge through Paddock Hill Bend, got several cars. Oh dear, in a bit of a jam, Stefan Donnelly, one of the cars involved in that, Marcus Nikovic also think has been embroiled. Let's hope that they are all okay. As the rest of the field swoop around Druids. It's Adam Gore in the blue car who leads from Craig Devon and then Martin Donnelly trying to squeeze to the inside of Ryan Savage for third at Graham Hill Bend. Sprint along the Cooper Strait and then through Surtees out onto the Grand Prix loop for the first time. And this, the Lotus Festival, really the jewel in the crown of the Lotus on track Elise Trophy season. There, unfortunately, are the cars Stefan Donnelly and Marcus Nikovic. Well, this was to be the first time that Stefan raced against Dad Martin, and he did for about two metres. 
So the safety car, not unsurprisingly, comes out. The good news is the drivers are OK. But with the recovery work ongoing, slightly different approach for the safety car, having to take the cars along the pit lane. There is Stefan. He walks clear. David Skeggs giving the thumbs up to Dad Martin, saying Stefan's OK. You can get on with your race. That concerns Marcus Nikovic. Also stalks clear. I think the cars were more jammed rather than damaged, which is good news. The recovery work complete. And we're about to go back racing. And look at this. A queue of four cars as they sprint into the resumption of the action. It's Adam Gore who leads the way from Craig Denman. Jason Baker, Martin Donnelly, and Gore might have a problem here. He's very slow into Paddock Hill Bend, and he drops from first to fourth in the blink of an eye. Indeed, it is a bit of a horror story there for Gore. His car slows dramatically as Craig Denman assumes the advantage from the white car of Martin Donnelly. This car we've seen regularly this season in the hands of Fulvio Mussi. Immediately, Donnelly in pursuit of Denman. Craig Denman always goes well here on the Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit. But he consults his mirror as Donnelly jinks to the inside at Surtees. Martin, who has raced Brands Hatch at all levels, well up to Formula 3000. As Adam Gore retires at Graham Hill Bend, Donnelly leads the field through Hawthorne. It really is a six-way scrap for the lead all the way back to Ryan Savage. Then a little bit of a gap back to Matthias Radostock down out of Westfield they're climbing into Sheen and Denman looks the inside of Martin Donnelly Donnelly just feathers the brakes they ride over the kerb and then on towards Sterling's the cambered left-hander much faster corner than you think Sterling's and then propels the drivers downhill very rapidly back into clearways Clark curve Craig Denman is fancying his chances here he's not allowing Martin Donnelly to make good his escape They've just been able to build a little bit of daylight, though, over Jason Baker in the blue car in third. It's James Little, the red and white car, in fourth. On the brakes, down through the gears, swoop down through the legendary Paddock Hill Bend. Great to see the spectator banking nice and busy as well for this Lotus Festival. Through Druids. And a challenge there for third, and James Little jinx to the inside of Jason Baker. So Little up into third place, Baker down to fourth. Let's see if Baker can cook something up to try and get himself back onto the podium. He's in pursuit a little on the short sprint along the Cooper Strait and then around Surtees. Then it's the white car of Martin Wills who is next along the bright yellow car of Ryan Savage. Good scraps from wherever you look. There's Clive Willis. He is just clear of the 18 car. That's Chris Perkins. And also Paul Patterson part of that scrap. Turn to the lead as Demon looks to the inside of Don Lee. Baker looks to the inside of James Little. And Savage kicks up the dust. And a slight gap back to the next group of cars. Matthias Radostock heading them. And this is impressive stuff from both Little and Baker. It's always been one of the beauties, really, of the Lotus on Track and Lee's trophy is that drivers from track day background can come into this championship and very quickly establish themselves at the very front of the field. You can see there with Little, he's got the yellow sticker, Black Cross. That means that he has done fewer than a handful of motor races. You want the white and green car of Paul Patterson in pursuit of Clive Willis. They've got Chris Perkins just ahead of them into Sterlings. Very tempting to have a look to the inside at Sterlings. Often ends with a trip to the spare parts department because the, the line is claimed quite late. It's a little bit narrower than you'd expect. Meanwhile, challenging for the lead again, Craig Denman looks the inside of Martin Donnelly. Donnelly takes the high, wide and handsome line, though, through Paddock Hill Bend. And therefore, he carries the momentum up Hailwood Hill and around Druids. As the pair of them scrap, you can see that James Little is beginning to close in the gap to the leading duo. And that's always the challenge here, as Donnelly and Denman do battle. There's Little, and that gap's not so large now. And then Jason Baker in fourth position. Still in touch. Little again shows himself the inside of Craig Denman. What about the scrap going on behind? They've been joined by John Davison. That's the bright green car. He now takes his turn to challenge Clive Willis as they head around Bram Hill Bend. Short sprint on the Cooper Strait as a problem. And around goes David Stead. That's at Surtees. He'll rejoin. 
the loss of several places. Still the leaders out on the legendary Grand Prix loop. It really is a section of the circuit the drivers absolutely adore racing on because it's very quick, but none of the corners are absolutely flat. You've really got to be brave. And that was certainly the case there from John Davidson, thinking about looking around the outside of Clive Willis at Hawthorns. It means though that Paul Patterson can challenge the inside to Westfield Bend, and he should go through there. Patterson indeed he does. What a race this is, wherever you look, there are some fantastic fights going on throughout the field. Steve Edwards in car 20 there. He is heading up the next little group. He's being pursued by Simon Oakley. Leading trio. Another lap reeled off and again Craig Demon contemplates the challenge. The inside of Paddock Hill bed draws alongside Martin Donnelly. Donnelly though claiming the momentum around the outside line. Uphill into Druids. Can break very, very late for Druids. Martin Donnelly knows every trick of the trade here around the Brands Hatch Grand Prix loop. But he's having to do the hard work and leading the way. It means that Demon and Little are with him. It also means that Jason Baker is beginning to close up as a challenge for second and Little to the inside of Craig Demon at Surtees. The pair of them run side by side. Demon, though, should carry the momentum out onto the Grand Prix loop and down Pilgrim's drop they come. And it's three wide because Jason Baker looks to the inside line to Hawthorns. it's Devon who's the bravest, he just squirts through at the middle, and actually as a result of all of that there's no change in the order, it still means the leading six cars are all very tightly bunched, because even with that battling Donnelly's only opened up an advantage about three, four car lengths, no more than that. What a race we've got underway here at Brands Hatch, and this is how Seth Walpole has become a spectator for the remainder of the race to escape from a pretty hefty impact into the tile wall there. The Druids build these Lotus Elise is strong and Seth is okay and in one piece which is not more than could be said for his car. Meanwhile back to the fight at the front of the field and six of them still doing battle. Ryan Savage there he is in the mix. It's Martin Donnelly the white and blue car who leads from the orange machine to Craig Demon then we've got the right and red car James Little the blue car Jason Baker this is fifth place White machine number 33, Martin Wills, and the yellow car of Ryan Savage. There's been very little really to choose between them throughout proceedings. We're now heading towards the latter stage of the race. Likewise, we've got this equally close battle headed by Clive Willis, the black car from the green and white car of Paul Patterson. Then it's John Davison, who's next along in the all green car, with Paul Baker in the cow liveried machine. Well, the stakes are high in this battle. It's for 17th place at the moment. Baker would like to elevate himself through if he possibly can. As Patterson and Willis go side by side, down Pilgrim's drop into Hawthorns. And again, thinking about the outside line there is Paul Patterson. He's giving Paul Baker there. He is the opportunity just to close in. You could say he's looking to move up the field, couldn't you, Baker? Meanwhile, we return to the fight at the front of the pack. And once more, Craig Devon thinking about that challenge into Paddock Hill Bend as they head into the final lap and you can see how hard Devon is trying, the car squirms on the brakes. Donnelly though does exactly what he's done throughout the race, which is just to have his machine perfectly positioned at all the right times. Round Druids, downhill into the left-hander of Graham Hill Bend. It's really the only corner here on the Brands Hatch Grand Prix loop that has substantially altered since the circuit was opened in the early 1960s. They're coming onto the tail, though, of Jackie Perkins on this last lap, and they don't want to come into contact with traffic. And Donnelly's going to catch her at the worst possible moment, coming out of Surtees, and that could give Demon the opportunity as they come down Pilgrim's Drop, and indeed it does. Craig Demon snatches the lead with just half a lap to go. So it's Demon from Donnelly, and then James Little in third place. Jason Baker in fourth, right with them. And now the boot is very much on the other foot. Can Donnelly pressurise Demon into an error? Through Westfield they come. And again, Craig Demon plants the car pretty squarely in the middle of the road. He's making Donnelly do all the hard work. Sterling's just two corners to go. Demon once more claims the racing line's perfection. It's now going to require something very brave from Martin Donnelly. Already getting something very brave from Paul Patterson once more. He looks to the outside of Clive Willis. It's a pair of them head through Hawthorns. 
me while out of Clark Kerr for the final time. And it's Craig Devon who's going to take victory here. What a fantastic race we've had in the Lotus on track. Elise Trophy here at the Lotus Festival. Devon wins it, Donnelly second, and James Little completes the rostrum. It has been a titanic scrap for 17th. Let's hope they don't hit any icebergs with a couple of corners to go as it is still as tight as you like between Willis and Patterson. And Patterson's got the slipstream here as they come onto the Brabham straight. Willis, though, has got the inside line. He might just hold on, but Patterson closes, closes across the line. And Willis does claim the position by 31 thousandths of a second. A look at the results then. Craig Denman wins it from Martin Donnelly with James Little in third, Jason Baker in fourth from Martin Willis and Ryan Savage. Chris Perkins doing well for 16th, clear of that super fight from Willis and Patterson. Still they keep coming, plenty of places gained for Christopher Mayhew. Jackie Perkins completes the finishers. So on to the top step of the rostrum, trophy champagne for a delighted, and rightly so, Craig Devon for Martin Donnelly and James Little. <laughs> Greg, as the rain comes down, absolutely fantastic drive. Congratulations. Thanks, thanks very much. Yeah, it's great fun, really good fun. Now battling with Donnelly all the way to the finish, weren't you? Yeah, he was. He was tooth and nail all the way. I thought I had him quite a few times, but uh, he just managed to keep me just a bit behind. Put always had the car in the right place. There's no uh, substitute for experience, is there? Certainly determined. Now it was a little bit of a shorter race set than usual, so you had to get going right from the get-go, didn't you? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I was. When we were behind the safety car, I was determined to try and stay on the back of Adam. Unfortunately, he had a problem because I was looking forward to a good race with Adam. But uh, Martin got the jump on us then straight away. And uh, <laughs> everybody, you see the rest of the race. So it, was good. it was great. I enjoyed it. I want to say a big thank you, first of all, to Paul Golding from Lewis on Track, who made it possible for me to be here today to race against my son. Which obviously, unfortunately, didn't happen uh, through no fault of his own. And to ID Systems, the car was going great. A big thank you to Wayne from... Essex Auto Sport, the car was on the money. And as I said before, you don't come into these guys' back garden and go out there and kick their ass. But I think that uh, I held my own. Unfortunately, I missed the gear in the last lap, but I think they learned a few lessons on being a very wide car. Yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it, watching the experts from very, very close quarters. <laughs> All down to the team, really. Hang on 11 put a great car together for me, and uh, the easy bit was driving it, really. Well, you certainly kept yourself in the mix there, right to the finish. Yeah, I did. Yeah, tried to. Tried to, <laughs> watching in the mirrors as much as watching forward, but okay, we're and here go we go. Inside. Let's yeah, go inside. Yeah. <laughs> so leaving Brands Hatch then it is Adam Gore in command in the championship. Fulvio Mussi now somewhat distant second and Craig Denman leaping up to third place after that super performance. But there wouldn't be a Lotus Festival without some displays from some classic Lotus Formula 1 cars. It's been a fantastic day for Lotus fans as uh, the F1 cars from throughout history have been out on the track today. We've had the Nelson PK car, that camel car that you may have seen, and also the Benetton car of Michael Schumacher. So an absolutely brilliant day for those Lotus fans here at Brands Hatch. Now let's take a look at the Lotus Cup UK Championship standings. Marcus Jewell currently sits at the top of the table with 149 points. Closely followed by Simon Deacon, who is a matter of three points behind. And third is Adam Knight with 146 points. Someone who has not had much success on the overall championship standings, but is very confident after qualifying is Fabio Randaccio. Fabio, now the reason that we've come to talk to you is because obviously you made a fairly bold statement yesterday by doing one flying lap. So two laps out there, one flying lap and in. How confident were you that you were going to get pole? quite confident. Um, I did the same at Spa but I didn't get a very good first lap so I had to do two. Um, but realistically with the qualifying in this championship if you if you go out first you get three laps max where you can do a time and then there's too much traffic to really do a time so you've got to get it in early and the rest of the sessions generally you're banging your head against a brick wall because other cars are in the way so I got out early I got a nice clear lap managed to get the time I wasn't going to go faster than that. Fantastic. Well, certainly wish you luck ahead of this race. Now, obviously, it's going to change the way you drive slightly. It's just starting to rain, and it is wet out there now. Um, Brand's obviously an amazing circuit to drive, but when it's wet, it's slightly more difficult. Yeah, I love the track either way. I mean, the, the wet, if anything, favours us. The difficult thing is always the tyre choice. 
the Lotus Cup UK take to a very wet track out here. Now a very confident Fabio Randaccio takes P1. Simon Deacon, last year's championship leader, back down in P7. So it's certainly going to make for some interesting racing. Now someone to watch is Martin Donnelly. He's all the way down in P17, but he is P3 in his class. So for the second time today, let's go racing. And once more, it is a gigantic grid for the Lotus Cup UK, headed by Fabio Randaccio. Front row shared with Adrian Hall, then it's Ken Savage and Adam Balon, with former champion Steve Train up in fifth place. Once more, Adam Gore right to the fore of the production class, alongside John LeMaster and Craig Demon, and Martin Donnelly should not be discounted. Taj Radstock should climb from 21st on the grid, as Stuart Plotnick always steadily moves up the order as the race progresses. So Chris Mayhew and Andy Dolan completing the 34 car field as the pace car peels into the pit lane, a rolling start, of course, as ever in the Lotus Cup UK. And Adam Gore electing to start from the pit lane. Maybe not such a bad idea given the damp circuit and the packed field as we get ready for the off here. Will it be Paul or Randaccio who leads into Panic Hill Bend as they sprint away? And it's the Lotus Europa, the white car with the green stripe. Fabio Randaccio who leads the field down through Paddock Hill Bend, it's Adrian Hall in second place, the bright yellow 211 of Ken Savage in third, and then we've got Steve Train who is looking to try and challenge around the outside of Adam Balon, as the field negotiate Druids for the first time, and Train, the bright blue 211 gets pushed out onto the grass, comes under immediate threat then from Adam Knight, but also Marcus Jewell, as they tip to through Graham Hill Bend for the first time asking along the Cooper Strait, and Wipers on the move there from Adrian Hall. I think it's just for the spray being kicked up by some of the cars. It's at the front of the production battle, unsurprisingly. It's Martin Donnelly there. We've got a good scrap between uh, Thomas Radostock, I think it was, and Craig Demon through Surtees. Still some words his nose in front, but there is Donnelly, car four at the head of the production battle. In the cars in front, that's Douglas Campbell just ahead of him in one of the completely prepared Lotus Exige V6 Cafars. The field swooping through Westfield on towards Sheen, and this is the challenge on the Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit that even when the sun comes out, because the track winds its way through the trees, the spray hangs in the air. It takes a lot longer for this section of the circuit to form a dry line in comparison to the Indy circuit. Donnelly in the mix, he's got Ron Savage and Stuart Plotnick now closing up in his field on his tail, then Matthias Radostock and Craig Devon as Randaccio powers through over the line Adrian Hall staying with him a pair of them in terms of outright pace have been the quickest drivers this season the challenge for both of them though is reliability over the full race distance as Adrian Hall looks to challenge Randaccio coming up the hill into Druids and has got the inside line for the head and he should go through here, Randaccio though experienced driver looking for the grip maybe on the wet line to the outside and then to the inside line at Graham Hill Bend he gets the car stopped in time he just about claims the apex really nice stuff that from the pair of them giving each other plenty of space but close hard fought racing he's giving the third place man Ken Savage the opportunity to close up into the action as well possibly to head through 30s on to Grand Prix loop as a spin around goes Stuart Plotnick. He's just avoided by Matthias Radostock. And that's always the challenge in these conditions. It's so easy to overstep the mark. You really are dancing on the razor's edge. Very uncharacteristic to see an error from Stuart Plotnick. Well, Steve Train has got Adam Knight, the black 15 car, and then the bright orange 211 and Marcus Jewell in behind him. They're all trying to chase down Adam Balon. So out front, Randaccio trying to ease clear of Adrian Hall and Ken Savage through Sheen. They all give the curbs a very wide berth as Adam Gore is steadily elevating himself up through the order, having started from the pit lane. Gore is now up towards the top four or five placings in the production championship battle. Uh, we've got wave yellow flags and the safety car has come out. Here is our production leader, Martin Donnelly. He acknowledges the marshals are waving the safety car board and here is why into the gravel track for Craig Demon the car just snapping across under braking 
because he requires recovery, as does Ryan Savage, who slid off into the gravel. But the recovery work is just about complete. The lights are out, and therefore we're about to go racing once more. And it's going to be the Lotus Europa of Fabio Randaccio who's going to lead the field as he backs them all up behind, waiting for that moment where he plants his right foot. Gets the race well and truly back underway again, leaving it very late until now he accelerates away and immediately builds a couple of car lengths over Adrian Hall in second place and third. It's the bright yellow, 2.11 of Ken Savage, then Adam Balon. He is coming under pressure from Steve Train in the bright blue, 2.11. Knight and championship leader Marcus Jewell very much in the mix. And just as the gaps have begun to open out, they have closed down once more, and that gives Adrian Hall another bite at the cherry in terms of deposing Fabio Randaccio, head of the field. It's the fit and pack all around Graham Hill Bend. If you're new to the Lotus Cup UK, to explain that it's two championships in one, really. There's the Super Sport Championship, which is for the more modified cars running at the very head of the field than the production championship, which is for the standard Elise's that you might see in the Lotus on Track Elise Trophy. It means that wherever you look, there is often some thoroughly entertaining dicing to be found, and none more so at the head of the field here, as Marcus Jewell looks to the inside of Steve Train. At Hawthorne's in the wet. That would have been a gem of a manoeuvre if he pulled it off. He couldn't quite do it. Instead, he looks to derail Train's challenge into Westfield. Again, though, Steve Train covers the racing line, and Jewell on that attempt to get through. Sheen, you really are doing very, very well if you're able to make an overtaking manoeuvre. Sterling's just about possible, but given that we've seen cars rotating with ease here, because of the slippery conditions, you don't want to overcook it on this first lap under green flag conditions after the safety car has retreated. Nonetheless, Marcus Jewell had such success in the Lotus on track Elise Trophy before stepping up to the 211 is very much in the mix. Adrian Hall still in pursuit of Fabio Randaccio. You can see now, as we thought earlier on, there is a, the beginnings of a dry line on the Brands Hatch Indy Circuit section of track, but that isn't really out on the Grand Prix loop just yet. As Marcus Jules got a good run here to the inside of Steve Train and slides through. That's a lovely manoeuvre there from Marcus Jules. If he can make it stick, which he does, as Train gets shown the curbs on the exit of Druids. Marcus Jewell finds a way through immediately. Steve Train comes under pressure from Adam Knight. Train, though, able to parry Knight's efforts in to Surtees as then picks up the pace out onto the Grand Prix loop. Again, Steve Train, though, living dangerously, really finding his way out to the curbs. There is a car of Stuart Ratcliffe right in the front of the production championship battlers. Steve Train and Adam Knight go side by side to Hawthorne already. Marcus Jewell easy and clear and begins to put pressure on Adam Balon. Cast your mind back to April and that fantastic battle between Adam Balon and Adam Knight at Sneston. And Balon withstanding the pressure from Marcus Jewell. Jewell looking every which way. Recovering from his earlier spin, making good progress. Multiple champion in MG racing. Stuart Plotnick as Martin Donnelly sliding through. Jason Baker, Matthias Radostock, almost side by side into Sheen. The driver's just getting a little bit more confidence as we move towards the midway point of this race. Look, it's an hour long race. And they've got to make a mandatory pit stop at some point. In many instances, that will also involve a driver change, although not actually for many of the drivers right at the very fore of the field. Ken Savage, the bail just to hide him there. We've got Jewel and Trey surging in there. Simon Deacon, last year's champion. Deacon always, you'll see him moving up the order stealthily as the race progresses. Good to see Philip Britton back in the V6 Kapal, that car very badly damaged in the crash at Alton Park earlier in the year. So here are our race leaders, Fabio Randaccio and Adrian Hall. They are building a nice buffer as Matthias Rutherstock and Jason Baker. Almost side by side into Graham Hill. Ben Rutherstock should have the racing line here. 
just about finds the traction to the outside. And this, for the drivers who are feeling brave, is going to offer very rich pickings because there's going to be grip on the wet line, which is where you'll find all the marbles and grit, which is away from the conventional racing line, and there'll be grip on the racing line. It gives them the opportunity to run in parallel to each other a bit more than we might normally see. Down Pilgrim's drop, the iconic Brands Hatch Grand Prix shot. It's the red and white car of Matthias Radstock to the inside of the blue car of Jason Baker. Now the track really beginning to dry out. This is just going to make it tricky for some of the drivers on treaded tyres just to manage the temperature of their tyres now because what happens if you're on wet tyres and the track dries out is that the, the grooves in the tyre begin to overheat and the rubber on the tyre surface begins to move around. It's very tricky to drive competitively on. Not that it's really stopping this train of 2.11s. They've dispensed with Alan Baylon, so it's Ken Savage in third, then Marcus Jewell and Steve Train next along. Almost a freight train, you might want to call it, as they head through Druids, and Ken Savage just slithers out wide. But he's got enough track position to maintain the place through Graham Hill Bend as well, but you can see all the drivers just taking some different attitudes, the level of grip available to them. And there's this Titanic scrap begins to form for third place. It's giving Adrian Hall and Fabio Randaccio the opportunity to really to romp off into the distance. And Gore sliding through the pack in the production championship battle as we expected he might. He's got Stuart Radcliffe well up with him. Again, for Gore, the challenge has been reliability this year, both in the Lotus Cup UK and the Lotus on Track Elise Trophy. After the disappointing retirement from the lead of the Elise Trophy race earlier on, he will be hoping for a problem three run all the way through to the chequer flag. It's James Little, who showed so well in that Elise Trophy race, but very difficult, different track conditions for the drivers this time around. And still through Westfield and Sheen, See, there's that glisten of surface water on the track. It makes it a real challenge to the drivers. Each and every corner very different. So the pit window now open as we're almost at half race distance. Who's going to duck in first? Randaccio and Hall continue to run, more or less nose to tail. Very little to choose between the pair of them. This has been a, a nice performance from both in that they have eased well, well clear of the rest of the pack. As now into the pit lane comes Martin Donnelly. He's followed through by Matthias Radostock as Adam Gore accelerates on his way. He's now very much at the front of the production battle. Donnelly and Radostock come to a halt. Steve Train is already in the pits, as is Kiri. And it's that time again. The pit lane is open in the Lotus Cup UK, and the mandatory three minutes should give them just about enough time to change their tyres. It is drying out there, and a lot of people are now choosing to change their tyres because hopefully the rain will stay off. And this is where the pit crews really have to earn their money because three minutes to change four tyres with manual jacking is going to be a little bit of a challenge this could see the race order really turned on its head. Javier Randaccio's team get to work, pushing the car up. The same for Marcus Jewell. Chris Mayhew is in. Meanwhile, he is handing over to Andy Dolan. Steve Train, having made his pistol early out on track, has found himself a nice bit of fresh air as well to run with. Marcus Jewell about to rejoin the fray as Fabio Randaccio continues to sit in the pits. It's going to be a few moments before the order reveals itself to us, we can see who the winners and losers of this pit window have been. But now it's really a case of whether or not you can emerge into some fresh air and begin to set some good lap times. And then Balon, the driver, opting to change tyres as John the Master takes over from Craig Demham. Getting her back down to the pits. And Kiri is caught up with Philip Britton. Philip, now I know you've just handed over to Marcus, but uh, you obviously had the trickier part of that race being on the wet. Uh, I don't know about that because it's still a little bit damp out there and he's, he hasn't got wets on anymore so it's going to be still going to be a little bit slippery but these are as you can see these are pretty well worn. <laughs> now obviously it's a fantastic circuit out there what's it like for you driving a Brands Hatch? A oh, Brands Hatch is I mean there's so many historic people that have been here I mean it just you can feel it as you go around it's almost like a ghost apparition that follows you it's really cool no it's a good it's a fantastic circuit. 
So the pit's still a buzz. Simon Deacon is in. The team get to work as wheel nuts get tightened for Fabio Randaccio. Gets the thumbs up and rejoins. Now, will he come out in the lead here? It looked as if it was a slightly longer stop than some of his rivals. He's got to maintain the pit lane speed limit. So he rejoins the action as we can now hear from Craig Denman. OK, Craig, talk us through. I know that you've obviously had a fantastic drive first time out. So now you've just ended up a little bit in the gravel. Yeah, well, the wet races are always a little bit of a lottery at first. You, you need to take a little bit of time, make sure you don't get punted out. So I was just trying to be a little bit cautious. Um, dropped a couple of places, but not the end of the world. Um, and as we came up into Druids, as we slowed down the spray clear, there was a guy on the in on the outside of the circuit, which was where I was heading, doing 30 miles an hour, and I just couldn't stop, so touched the brakes, but I would have hit him or gone in the gravel, so I landed up in the gravel and lost the lap. Well, the gravel was the best choice, I think. Yeah. Now, you've handed over now, so obviously keenly watching to see if you can move up a few places. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, it'll be any good for us today. I don't think we're going to score any points, to be honest. I think that's probably a uh, drop score for us. And it is very tight amongst the leading trio. Steve Train out front from Ken Savage. And then Fabio Randaccio closing up onto their tail. Fortunately, though, for Ken Savage, this is all academic. He has been found guilty of an irregular pit stop and is looking at a two-lap and 24-second penalty. So he runs second on the road. In reality, he is a long way down from there. So Randaccio is looking to surge up through the order. A challenge for the lead the race. He's just moved past Glenn Sherwood. Randaccio, the early leader, had a slightly slower pit stop than his rivals. As has proved to be the case, I think that's worked out well. Steady and correct as all oh, problems there. Douglas Alexander and Matage Radostock tangling at Hawthorns and Radostock. Well, it is almost a bank holiday weekend. He goes to the beach and unfortunately he's going to stay there until the chequered flag because he gets buried at Hawthorns as now Randaccio looking to make the move on Ken Savage on the road. Of course, unbeknownst to both of them is the penalty here afflicting Savage. So Ken, not surprisingly, going to make this as hard as he can for Randaccio. At the earlier stage of the race, we saw that the Lotus Europa really had the legs on the two 11s. So it's the case here, Randaccio, very, very angular entry to Paddock Hill Bend. He really has got the handling just as he wants it, and he's got the inside line-up. Hawthorne Hill into Druids, makes the move. Consolidates second place then for Fabio Randaccio. He's second on the timing screen, second on the road, and off in pursuit now of the race leader, Steve Train. There is Train. Daccio closing up onto his tail. Around Surtees. Great to see the Lotus Europa running so well. Hopefully without any mechanical dramas. Meanwhile, Stuart Plotnick and Adam Knight running in close conjunction. This has given us a very jumbled order, actually, post pit stops, as Adam Gore leads the production class because of the fact that they really had to make tyre changes. Therefore, it just came down to how quickly they could be done as Randaccio is right in pursuit here as Steve Train. The pair of them turning through Clark Curve. This is the fight for lead the race, and Randaccio's got a very good run coming onto the Brabham straight. But Steve Train, more importantly, he's got his nose in front. He's going to make Randaccio do this the hard way. Randaccio again takes the high line into Paddock Hill Bend. It means he could just take the perfect angle of attack and again looks to challenge up Hawthorne Hill into Druids, almost a carbon copy of the mover he made on Ken Savage. Not quite, though, because across to cover the line was Steve Train down into Graham Hill Benton again. Train to the inside. Daccio in pursuit. He's got the inside line, though, for certain. He's sure he's going to go through this time around. And Fabio Randaccio takes the lead of the race away from Steve Train. Train now trying to chase down Randaccio. Meanwhile, we've got a super scrap for second place in the production class between Jason Baker and Anthony Dunn. Dunn in the bright orange car, Baker the blue machine. A pair of them separated by a couple of car lengths as Randaccio and Train do battle. It's going to be bad news for Steve Train though when he comes round over the start and finish line. He's got a drive through penalty and therefore he's going to lose touch here with Randaccio. So this fight out on the Grand Prix loop. 
little bit more for naught, really. The bad news for Trey. Great news for fans of Fabio Randaccio. As Adam Knight moves past Marcus Miller. Surtees really just begin to re-establish itself as Matt Bartlett. In the thick of the action here. Accelerates along the gravel straight. He's in pursuit then of Phil Capstick. They're about to go a lap down to Fabio Randaccio. Randaccio in the Lotus Europa now beginning to move away from the rest of the order as Matt Bartlett gets it all very wrong coming into Drew. It's into the gravel trap. He steers to lessen the angle into the tyre wall. But I suspect that that is day done for Matt Bartlett. He did very well actually to scrub the speed off. As Marcus Jewell, the championship leader, doing everything he can to continue to climb up through the order in the latter stages of the race. As Bartlett's door is open, he's not going to get out of there. Simon Deacon, the driver, looking to leave Brands Hatch with a nice and tidy points haul to his credit about the fight for second place in the production class but it's now Anthony Dunn who's moved ahead of Jason Baker they've got James Little as well just in behind them the green and yellow car you can disregard because that is John the Master who's a couple of laps down after the uh, adventures from Craig Demon a little bit earlier on looking to the inside of Jason Baker Baker though able to maintain the racing line through Druids. He doesn't have to defend either into Graham Hill Bend, and that's the real key in the production class, the cars being so even that you can just not drive over defensively. If you just stick to what you need to do, you can make it very tricky for the car behind to find a way past. That's exactly what Jason Baker's doing at the moment. All the while, they're trying to come back to Anthony Dunn out onto the Grand Prix loop. Steve Train serving his drive-through penalty. He's not going to lose second place as a result of all of that the more substantial penalty in favour of Ken Savage. Nonetheless, it is going to make it not impossible for Steve Trey to come back to Fabio Randaccio. Meanwhile, Adam Knight and Marcus Jewell having a super fight here. This is for third place. It's currently in favour of Adam Knight. Jewell, though, would like to get himself up onto the podium as the pair of them turn through Westfield. And Jewell looking to try and challenge. He draws alongside coming out of the Westfield. And I think he's made contact. He has all. Oh, that's a huge accident for Marcus Jewell. The car clatters into the tyre wall and the 211 absolutely demolished. Let's hope that Marcus is OK. He's moving in the cockpit. The tyre wall has been ripped apart, as has the car, and that is wonderful to see that Marcus Jewell emerges. I'd be very surprised, though, if we don't have a red flag because the car has been very, very badly damaged. It's in a dangerous position on the track as well. So Randaccio turns through Sterling, he leads, and yes, now the red flag comes out. The race has been brought to a halt very close to the allotted time being met anyway. So we will have a result declared. It will be in favour of Fabio Randaccio. So he takes the win in the Lotus Cup UK. Not quite the circumstances he'd have liked. So let's have a look then. At the final results, victory for Fabio Randaccio from Steve Train, Adam Knight in third from Simon Deacon, Adam Balon and Glenn Sherwood. An excellent win in the production class for Adam Gore from Radcliffe and Dunn and Jason Baker completing the podium. More points for Ian Fenwick in 12th place. John the Master and Craig Devon 21st despite that early spin. And Ryan Savage completing the classified finishers. Well, given the magnitude of the accident, please report that Marcus Jewell has uh, only suffered a fractured sternum and a couple of fractured ribs from that horrendous accident. Shows just how strong the car is. So the drivers celebrating on the podium, and none more so than our race winner, Fabio Randaccio. Fabio, congratulations! A fantastic drive from start to finish. You were in the front. Yeah, I, it was challenging though. It was certainly didn't go all my way. Um, I lost time around the pit stop. I think I, my, my pit stop was a bit long, changing tyres. I think maybe I lost time on the track. So, 
I had to claw back some, some places. And then at the end of the race, I, uh, the engine shut down on me every lap through uh, Dingle Dell. So I started losing lots of time. And to be honest, lucky that Steve got a uh, drive through. But yeah, no, it was good in the end, good result. It was a good race. Um, I think I made the right tyre choice and the pit stop coming in quite early, got myself onto dry tyres and uh, seemed, to, seemed to do quite well. I got into the lead with sort of two laps to go and got a drive through penalty. So unfortunately lost the race, win overall, but really enjoyed it, it was a good race. It was tricky conditions, but it was uh, it was it was a good race. Uh, at the moment, my thoughts are mostly with Marcus. Uh, the two of us were the collided, which is uh, with the result of him in the wall. So very concerned that uh, he's okay. Because I was starting from the pit lane, we we started on normal tyres, so I wasn't on wet. So when I came in from a pit stop, I could just sit there and go back out. And as soon as this track started to dry, I could just push on. So yeah, it was a good choice on tyres as well. As we hurtle towards the latter stage of the season in the Super Sport Championship, it's Adam Knight who leads the way, just five points clear. Simon Deacon, Ian Fenwick, Steve Guglielmi well up in third. It's going to be a very tight run in to the end of the season. The same goes in the Production Championship. Anthony Dunn and Stuart Radcliffe to the fore, but only ten points ahead of Craig Denman and John Lemaster. Now it is a slightly earlier than expected goodbye from us here at Brands Hatch. After the incident that happened during the Lotus Cup UK race, our second round of the Lotus On Track Elise Trophy will not happen. But it has been a fantastic weekend for Lotus fans with the F1 cars taking to the circuit. And of course for our Lotus Cup UK, Fabio Randaccio really truly did have a fantastic weekend. So until next time, it's goodbye from us all here at Brands Hatch.